Hey everyone, I'm Cameron Lewis. This is John Truax. He is the mobilization pastor at Cross Church and also our Staunton campus pastor. We thought it'd be a fun idea to eat some hot wings, ask some questions. That way, uh, Cross Church and the Staunton community could get to know him a little better. So we're gonna start off here with our first wing. We like to eat the wing first, then I'll ask you the question. How much of this wing do I have to eat? It's um, like all one bite, like gooey. Ooh. But it's good. Introduce your family, how many people are in your family, ages of your family. So I'm John, and uh, my wife is Gretchen. We've been married for about 16 years. We have four kids together, and a 15-year-old son named Hayden, 12-year-old girl. <laughs> she just had a birthday, so I get a pass. 12-year-old girl on, uh, yeah, her name's Hannah, and a nine-year-old nine boy, Henry, and a one-year-old, Holden. Awesome. Yeah. What's up with the spacing there? <clears throat> There's a gap in the middle of, yeah. uh, of like eight years. Um, you know, that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, that could lead into some really weird conversations. Yeah. <laughs> so. Roll into number two. Wing number two. What is this? Uh, it doesn't Tama, matter. Just eat it. Tama, how do you say that? Tama La Pica? Tama La Pica. Tama La Pica. This one is not as hot as the last one. Don't even really have much flavor. Mm. Sorry, whoever <clears throat> made that. Mm. There's the heat. It's like on the back end. No, I like it. So John, uh, just to give us some more information on, on who you are and, and how you've came to this place of ministry, um, we would love to know, how did you meet Jesus? Where, where did that, where was that time in your life? How did it happen? Yeah. Kind of go through that process for us. It was an Air Force basic training. I was, uh, it was the day before my 19th birthday. Five weeks into basic training, uh, as a, a kid growing up, uh, I was a rebellious kid running from God, uh, not in a Christian home, no Christian example growing up. And uh, my recruiter, <coughs> <coughs> it's there in the back of your throat. <laughs> so. <coughs> My recruiter told me uh, as, I, as I was leaving for basic training that I should volunteer to be a chapel guide. Um, and having no background on what that was, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> got to basic training. The first night was uh, getting yelled at at about four o'clock in the morning and uh, asked for volunteers for chapel guide. So I volunteered to be a chapel guide and um, didn't know what that was. That was like a Tuesday night, like Wednesday morning. Didn't do anything as a chapel guy the rest of the week and thought, man, I got away with something. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> Until Sunday morning came and uh, I got woken up really early Sunday morning uh, by the, the guy who was a door guard and he asked if I was... That's <coughs> <coughs> there. He asked if I was a chapel guide and uh, I said I was. I told him I didn't know what I was supposed to do and he was like, you know, get anybody who wants to go to church, uh, march them down to chapel, stay there with them, march them back. And uh, so I did that and marched the first group of people down Came back. I'm like, okay, now what? Let's do it again. Wow. And uh, five times I had to march people on <laughs> Sunday morning to church, having no background on what church was. Uh, and then we also had to go to a Sunday school class. Uh, and so it was On like, the same day? Same day, yeah. Wow. So I had five church services and a Sunday school class on, on that first Sunday. But it still took five weeks of that for me to slow down enough uh, to really hear the gospel and respond to the gospel. All right, so for number Please. three, we have Fiji Fire. It says uh, native bongo chili hot sauce. What the heck is bongo chili? Mm -hmm. I thought that was an All instrument. All it says on the ingredients is chilies. What was, what was your calling to ministry like? Got out of ba basic training. I uh, went to tech school and some other place in Texas and uh, ended up in South Carolina. And at this point, all I had known is, is chapel, you mm -hmm. know, base chapel and, uh, and how they were doing. Gretchen and I went to chapel and kind of plugged in, but it wasn't the same as it was in, in basic training. Uh, you know, in basic training, the chaplains are really focused on communicating the gospel. Yeah. Uh, and when we got to that first base, they weren't. Right. Uh, and that was disheartening for me as a young Christian. Uh, so we stopped going. After a while, you know, we weren't really going to church anywhere. And Gretchen was working at a bank at the time, and one of her friends at the bank asked if she liked to play softball. And she was like, yeah, I played in, in high school. And so she said, why don't you come and play on our, our church softball team? Mm. Uh, the only exception is, or the only requirement is yeah. you have to attend church at least sure. twice a month. 
And so we both wanted to play on the softball team. We both, yeah, we're going to go to church. So we started That's going how to the, church league <laughs> is supposed to happen. Yeah. And you should, you should all join the <laughs> softball team. We were starting to hear uh, the gospel preached and, uh, and see what church life was like. Sure. Uh, and the associate pastor there kind of took me under his wing and discipled me and kind of showed me what it meant to live a life of faith. Yeah. And having him in as, as an example in my life, I think was really the beginning of, of God calling me into ministry. Mm. And so I came up with this like 20 year plan in my mind mm. um, that, that I'm going to stay in the Air Force for 20 years. I'm going to retire after 20 years. I'm going to get a pension. Uh, and then I'm going to go into full time ministry. Right. Uh, my, and I rationalize it. You know how yeah. we do? We yeah, rationalize yeah, yeah. things in our head. You know, my, my rationalization was I don't want to be a burden financially on a church. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to get this retirement, this pension that's going to come in so I won't be a burden. And then after eight years in the military, God, God spun you the yeah, other God way. God was like, yeah, you had this plan, uh, but I've got something else in store for you. Yeah. Uh, and it was really a lot of a lot of prayer uh, for, for Gretchen and myself, a lot of prayer for our friends, asking them to be praying for us about it, because we really did feel God calling us to get out of the military mm -hmm. and go into ministry. Uh, it is hot sauce. It literally just says it's hot called sauce. hot sauce. Uh, scotch bonnet mustard. Scotch bonnet so. mustard. Yeah, that's the first one where I've enjoyed like the flavor. Me too. You were stationed in, cha in Japan for mm -hmm. some time, yep. right? While you were there, uh, you adopted Henry. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that process like for you? Was it hard? Was it mm -hmm. easy? So adoption was kind of something that, that Gretchen and I had talked about for a long time. Uh, something that God had put on our hearts. Uh, but another one of those areas that really just kind of scared the crap out of us. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so we never really followed through with it. And shortly after getting uh, to Japan, we were introduced to a lady who worked with a, a crisis pregnancy ministry in Japan uh, where they were working with ladies who were in crisis pregnancy and considering abortion mm -hmm. uh, and really ministering to them and talking to them about uh, options other than abortion. When we met her, we told her, you know, we, we feel like adoption is something that, that we want to do. And she said, you know, just call me. When you're ready, we'll get the paperwork going. Yeah. We never called her. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but God just kept, kept placing her in our lives, uh, not just at church. You know, we met her at church, but uh, anytime we would go out, we would just run into this lady. And the same conversation happens over and over, yeah. right? So like, yeah, we think God would uh, is calling us to adopt. And she <laughs> would say, just call me, we'll get it started. You know, one day we got a phone call from her after this kind of back and forth thing several times. And she calls us and she says, you know, I'm not supposed to be calling people. Mm. Uh, she said, but I, I think you're right. I think God is calling you to adopt. Uh, so I'm calling you. Let's start the application. We couldn't deny it anymore, you know. It's, uh, so we went ahead and started the application. In August, right at the beginning of August, we got a phone call. And this is just like a couple months, like two months after we started the process. We've got this little boy. Uh, his name is KG. Kind of all the, the information about him. She said, uh, would you be interested in adopting him? Mm. Gretchen and I were getting ready to leave on a date, like babysitters at the house, yeah. come to watch uh, uh, Hayden and Hannah. And so she says, would you, would you pray about adopting this little boy? I'm writing all the information on a dry erase board in our kitchen, so I don't have to try to remember it. And I get off the phone and Gretchen was like, what did she say? I'm like, she said she wants us to pray about it. And I just kind of looked at each other and we're like, you know, what do we do? Uh, so we decided we're going to go on our date. Yeah. We're, we're going to go on our date. Yeah. So we get there. We're kind of just trying to figure out what we're doing on this date. And just, a, I don't even know how long we were there. Uh, her and I were just like, why are we here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, let's go call her back and tell her we obviously, you know, we want to adopt we'll to. this kid. Yeah. Like we've been praying about this for months. <clears throat> yeah. It was probably like two weeks from the time we got that phone call till the time that, that Henry came home to our house. Uh, but it was the longest two weeks of my life. Like sure. every day I'm calling her like, hey, are you, yeah. can, he, can we get him yet? Like, you know, what's going on with this? And she's like, you got to be patient. We got to work through some stuff. She brought him home to us on my 25th birthday. Oh, very uh, cool. And I don't know if that was her plan or if that was just God slowing everything down so that Before. it would happen on that. But it was, it was an awesome, awesome day. He was born almost at the exact time we started the paperwork. Wow. Uh, and so it was, it was just kind of this, Everything fell right into place exactly how God wanted it orchestrated. Yeah. Los Calientes. This is hot ones official. Los Calientes. Los... That means not spicy at all, right? Yes, right. Okay. Los Calientes. In Spanish for no spice. 
we've kind of we've heard it, uh, maybe not factually, but through some of the stories that you were in the military, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. Air Force boot camp, Japan, all these things. Yep. Do you have like a really good military military story for us? Like funny, scary, crazy? I don't know. So I was in the Air Force, which is like like the smartest branch to go into, but like the least cool branch to right. go into. So. <laughs> Uh, I was an aircraft mechanic, uh, worked on ejection systems. One time when I was in Korea, we were in an exercise. Uh, mm-hmm. So you like simulate that your base is under attack and uh, under attack and you work through kind of how you're going to respond to these things, but you still have to do your, your normal job mm-hmm. while all this is going on. There was one night during the exercise and uh, they, they closed most of the base. So you have to eat MREs during the exercise. You can't sure. go to the chow hall. You can't go to Burger King or whatever. I was back in our shop and I was doing um, reports on all the maintenance that's getting done. And we have to document all of that stuff. And I was hungry, I wanted dinner, so I thought I'm gonna make uh, chili MRE, which yeah. are, they're the best MREs. <laughs> I'm too impatient to use, like they give you a bag, has like this stuff in the bottom, you put water in there, you close it, roll it up, and it like steams. It yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm too impatient to use that and we have radiators keeping the building warm. Oh, no. So I take my, <laughs> my bag of MRE chili and I stick it between the slats on the radiator. I'm like, this is going to heat up my chili. Yeah. And I go back and I'm working on my my uh, maintenance reporting of all the work that's getting done. I forgot about the chili. The guys come in from out on the flight line. They're like, oh, we need to report all this stuff. So now I'm like going through all these, you know, maintenance reports, getting it all put in. Completely forgot about the chili. <laughs> and I get it all done and I turn and I look and the chili is still in the radiator, uh, but the bag has expanded. Oh no. And I go to pull it out and I can't pull it out because it's expanded <laughs> too much. I'm, I'm a smart person. Right. I can figure out how to do this. I grab a pair of scissors <laughs> and think, I'm just gonna poke a little hole in the top of the bag. Uh, and let out some of the the pressure and pull it out. So I don't know if as I was reaching down to do it, the bag gave way and exploded or if I actually got it with the scissors. Yeah. Uh, But the bag explodes. (laughs) Chili goes everywhere. (laughs) It goes all over my face and I'm in in chemical gear. Right. So the only thing exposed is my hands and my face. Yeah. I have chili, like burning hot, boiling chili (laughs) on my face like down my, my arms, it's all over my hands. And it was a loud explosion. One of the guys who was with me, his name was Che, he thought the radiator had exploded. And when I turned around, the chili was red. He thought my face was like melting oh, off. Oh no. Like he didn't know what had happened. And so he's like flipping out. And I, you know, I get downstairs where the bathroom is and I start cleaning it off. I have like chili beans like burned into my face. It was, it was horrible. Uh, so. I didn't eat the chili MREs for a while after that. Uh, I still would, though, because they're, awesome. they're good. Uh, yeah. This is a hot Thai green okay. hot sauce. Okay. Sereno pepper and lemongrass. Mm. That's what makes it Thai, the lemongrass. Uh, how long have you and Gretchen been together? We've been married for 16 years. We started dating, I mean, dating as much as high school kids date. Yeah. July 11th, 2001. So like 19 years ago, almost. Okay. Uh, we broke up for about a year there in the middle because I was a jerk. What was her first impression of you and maybe her dad's first impression uh, yeah, of you? Yeah. Her dad did not like me. <laughs> so Gretchen actually um, like wanted to date my best friend. I wanted to date her and I was more persistent than Danny was. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> she finally gave in. Um, and and decided to date me. So in in high school, like I dyed my hair all kinds of crazy colors, like yes. uh, any color you can think of. But it was dyed some funky color. I had my eyebrow pierced. You know, I I rode my skateboard everywhere. The first time her dad saw me, like we had the like the town fair or whatever. Mm-hmm. Gretchen and I were hanging out, and he picked her up, uh, and he just kind of saw me like with her. And then she got in the truck, and he was like, "Nice eyebrow ring." Mm. Yes. I, I thought it was a nice eyebrow ring. Like, as a high school kid, it was awesome to have sure. an eyebrow ring. Now, as an adult, I'm like, man, I was dumb. This one is a stargazer. If you want to look at that, kind of a scary. It has a skeleton. Mm. It touched my lips. I think that was bad. Do you like a like a good prank? <laughs> I do. Have you pulled a lot of pranks in your day? I don't know, what do you define a lot? I don't but, know. Yeah, I think so. I've done a lot of pranks. You're, you're a prankster. Mm-hmm. What are some like the the lengths you've went for a good prank? Like we we're in the middle of like a prank war uh, with some some friends. Uh, I was the youth pastor at a youth ministry assistant. She kind of starts this the prank war 
one day when I was out to lunch, she like saran wraps my car, mm, right? Classic. Yeah, and she's dumb enough to send me a picture of it, right? <laughs> Through a whole bunch of different, you know, back and forth pranks. I thought it'd be funny to get on Amazon and buy a little bottle of fart spray, you know, liquid fart, whatever yeah. it is. Comes in the mail, you know, we're in Japan or whatever. One day we're having like this cleaning day at the church. So there are a whole lot of volunteers at the church and Lindsay's there. She's over in like the resource closet. <laughs> and so I grab the fart spray and I go in there and I squirt like three sprays. Like the bottle <laughs> says like only do one, one. <laughs> right? So I open the door of the resource closet, squirt it three times, close the door really quick and run away. <laughs> Like the whole first floor of the church had to like evacuate. It was horrible. It was so bad. Like the whole first floor of the church. I felt horrible about it. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. But I'm like, I don't know, too stingy to throw it away. Open up my desk drawer and I put it in the back of my desk drawer and I close it. So that's the prank. That's not even the bad part. Right. A month later, maybe two months later, um, we had a Saturday night worship service at church. And we were uh, at church. You know, we're in worship. It gets over. And uh, I come out of worship, and I smell that fart spray. And I'm walking, and I'm like, it, it's getting worse. So I'm going towards my office, and I knew I had put it in my desk drawer. The guy who led worship for me at the church campus where I was the campus pastor, his son was hanging out in my office. Oh, no. And we're going through my desk drawers and found this and thought, oh, this would be funny, and just, like, starts squirting it all over the place. His dad <laughs> felt so horrible. Like so bad that he that he had done this, that he was going through my drawers in my yeah. office. His dad feels bad enough. I'm not going to come in and like go off on him or anything like that's punishment enough. And yeah. I mean, we were all punished because that liquid right. fart is bad. <laughs> Number Let's eight. Here this. we go. This is the this, famous. What's famous about this? It's called the bomb uh, beyond insanity. I'll say it this way. I've finished all my wings. Uh huh. This is where I'll stop finishing all my wings. See, I'm sweating like, just based <laughs> off of your response. Like you asked why it was yeah, famous. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just like how you big know. of a like what are the requirements for yeah, a, a good bite? bite. Yeah, a, a good bite. Yeah, That's take, the requirement. I mean, take okay. a good bite. All right. Don't do anything differently. It's in my nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why are you like ask the question? I'm trying to remember the question. You're not supposed to be struggling here. I'm not struggling. But I am slipping my mind. I just need more context. I, really, I want the story. I've heard something about Butter and Hayden and sleeping and yeah. I, I yeah. just, I need something. Was there a time that you were yeah. supposed to be watching Hayden? Yeah, you don't have to keep asking the question. I don't oh, know exactly okay. what oh, you're okay. talking about. I'm just trying to <laughs> jog your memory here. <clears throat> Don't drink too much. I don't even like milk. Okay. That's gross. <laughs> so Hayden and Butter. Yeah, Hayden, Butter. Got it. I was in the Air Force, and uh, our squadron was doing a fundraiser at a NASCAR race. That's the story. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to a NASCAR race all weekend, and then we have a youth event. Right. That I'm supposed to be working at. I'm going to meet Gretchen at the youth event. That was the plan. So I go to the youth event. She has Hayden with her. I get there and I'm like, I need to go home and shower. <laughs> yes, I'm sweating yeah, and crying, crying a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so I grab Hayden. I go home to shower. Super tired. Yeah. Get home, shower, get cleaned up, sit on the couch, and fall asleep. Perfect, like, parenting mm -hmm. right there. Hayden comes a little while later and wakes me up. <laughs> with a handful of butter. <laughs> I'm like, why do you have butter? <laughs> and then walk in the kitchen, and he had gotten onto the table, gotten the butter off of the table, because Gretchen had made pancakes for breakfast, Yeah, and smeared it all over the floor, <laughs> and all over the cabinets, and everywhere that a two-year-old can reach in the kitchen. Smeared. That was embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smeared butter. Everywhere. So, like, I'm furious. And you can't just, like, wipe up butter when you clean it. So I'm mad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <clears throat> as a man, I want to blame somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> so so I called Gretchen. I'm like, you left out the butter. <laughs> like, this is all your fault. You left out the butter. It's like, how is this my fault? You were supposed to shower and come back. <laughs> and you fell asleep. Why does it not get better? <laughs> I feel like it should get better with time. 
Number nine is, uh, this is a new one. I've never had this one. Why do you do this? But the like, name is extremely encouraging. It's called Dingo. Well, wait. No, wait. It's called Widowmaker hot sauce. <laughs> Widowmaker. Yeah. And it says warning. Widowmaker. Extreme. It just says warning extreme. And then a 15 out of 10 heat. So I'm not really sure what that means, but. Mm. All right. I'm going to give you a little pop quiz. Please don't. Yeah, it's going to be a pop quiz. Um, Is there multiple choice? Ask the stinking question. Stop oh, eating wings. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. The heck? I'm gonna say an animal. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna name an animal. Okay. And then you're gonna say, I guess it's not true or false. We'll back this up. I'm gonna say an animal. You're gonna say extinct or not extinct. Oh my goodness! I know okay. where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> Cats. Not extinct. Okay. Uh. <laughs> you can't even think of animals. <laughs> No, I can't. Uh, tigers. Not extinct. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> bass. Like the fish? Yeah. You said animals. Yeah, that's an animal. Ba no. Bass are not extinct. <laughs> is, is a fish not an animal now? <laughs> no, they're fish. <laughs> it's an animal. <laughs> Continue. <clears throat> Woolly mammoth. <laughs> extinct. Okay, good. Uh, <clears throat> buffalo. Well, if you ask like 16 year old me, I thought they were extinct, okay? Gretchen and I, I think some of her siblings were in the car as well. We were driving out uh, to Lake of the Ozarks uh, where her, her family had a cabin. We were going up there to spend the weekend with her family. Driving through central Missouri. <coughs> and Gretchen says, oh, I'm excited. You know, up here there's this, this buffalo farm. And I laugh and I'm like, yeah, right. Uh, and uh, she was like, what do you mean? I'm like, buffalo are extinct. To which she was like, you're joking, right? <laughs> Why? Like, you're joking. Buffalo are extinct. Uh, turns out they're not. <laughs> uh, in case anybody was wondering, buffalo are not extinct. And uh, and I was really embarrassed. I was still like in that stage too where I was still trying to impress her. That was like completely demoralizing. And she was like, I'm going to show you. Sure enough, there's a buffalo farm over yeah. in Missouri. And yeah. uh, they're not extinct. And they're not just kept in that one place too yeah. it's not like they have the last of them the little tradition <coughs> we do it's not mandatory but i think if you're going to be staff it's mandatory so this is the um hot ones official last dab xxx i haven't had this one this one's hotter than the original last dab but we like to put a little bit of extra <coughs> on our last wing it just adds a little flavor flavor yeah there it is. We do a little dink. Pink. Dink. Here we go. You said pink. I said pink. You said pink. Mm -hmm. Dink. Dink, pink, hink. Oh. This one has a great flavor. There's some sauce there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the question? Yeah, the question. <clears throat> um, don't you enjoy that though? Okay. Ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> if Life PD was a TV show back in your day when you were in high school, uh -huh. what do you think you'd be on the show for? Like, you know how when you were a kid, there was always that one person that your mom would be like, you can't hang out with that kid. Oh, yeah, I was probably that kid. I was most definitely that kid. <laughs> so I got into a lot of trouble. I did a lot of dumb uh, and stupid things. But before I knew Jesus, uh, I did... Things that were dumber than eating these hot wings with you. <laughs> uh, I would have probably ended up on live PD for hitting mailboxes with a baseball bat. <laughs> like hanging out the back of a truck, like driving down the road and hitting yeah. mailboxes. Yeah, it was dumb, dumb, stupid choices. Yeah. Like we, we make dumb choices as kids, uh, as immature people. Uh, and I made a lot of those choices. But if I had to, to say I was on for something, it would have been that. One time, even younger, like before high school, I was like in the fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Live PD in the fourth grade, that was awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. How, how old are you in the fourth grade? Six, <laughs> 10, nine. You said six? Nine. Six? Okay. Like nine years old, right? Behind my house was was kind of this, this larger house and it had a really big detached garage. But people moved out of the house. And uh, one day I was like walking by with my friends and I was like, you know, they used to have a pool table in their garage. So we broke into their garage. We're like in there, we're like playing pool and the cops show up. 
because I guess the house had an alarm. Uh, <laughs> so much sweat. And uh, <laughs> the cops show up. I didn't know. I was crying, like bawling my eyes out. Like, I didn't know what to do. The cops are here. I broke into this house to play pool in his garage. Well, thank you for Jesus. Yeah, yeah, for Jesus. Sure. <sighs> <clears throat> Jesus changes everything. I'm not breaking into houses anymore. Yeah, uh, I don't have the desire to do that. Well, John, you finished it. You've uh, you faced the gauntlet. You've ate all the hot wings, answered all our questions. I want to give you kind of a, a, a quick second, 30 seconds, whatever it is. Um, if you want to look at this camera right here, you can say anything to cross church, what your goal is here, whatever you want to say. Live by the word of God and not by traditions. Uh, that we see here, this was horrible. <laughs> and so if Cameron or anybody asks you to do this, tell them no. I would encourage everybody to live up to our call as disciples of Jesus mm -hmm. uh, to go and make disciples of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> get to work doing that. Amen. All right. Thank you. Yay! Yeah. All done. <laughs>